Everyone knew Mark was a jerk. I would always see him harassing one of the shy kids in the halls at school. One day, I had had enough. So I marched up to him and yelled, Hey, stop bullying people. You're hurting their feelings. Mark was stunned. No one had ever stood up to him before. The shy kid ran away and we were left staring at each other. I was scared of what he would do or say, but he didn't really do or say anything. He only looked down like he was really sad and walked away. I was so shocked. And I had to admit, I felt kind of bad. I never yelled at anyone before, and I only did it because I thought he would get mad. But seeing him sad made me feel terrible. The next day, the entire hallway stunk. Everyone was trying to find out where the smell was coming from. As soon as I got close to my locker, I knew something was wrong. I opened it to find that it was yesterday's fish sandwich. It had been put in there and left all night. I almost puked. That's when I saw Mark smiling from down the hall. He was wearing those big, stupid headphones he always wore, and he even waved to me. All the guilt I had disappeared. I was going to get him back. I just needed to figure out how. All day, I snuck behind him, following, watching, like a stealthy ninja. Every move he made, I was right there. But he never saw me. I noticed him writing in his notebook all day, in every class, but he was never prepared with the assignments. So I knew, whatever he was writing, it wasn't homework. The notebook became my obsession. I needed to know what was in it so I could use it against him. But he never left the thing alone. It was always right beside him. Finally, in English class, he went to the bathroom. But he was smart, or should I say, paranoid enough to put the notebook in his bag. I pretended to drop my pencil and crawl to his bag. I couldn't take the whole notebook without being discovered. So I just opened the zipper and I hoped that would be enough for the notebook to fall out when he took his bag. And then, when the bell rang and class was done, he put his earphones on again, picked up the bag, and the notebook fell out. He didn't hear it, of course, so I ran and grabbed it. I ran home and read it. It wasn't jokes or anything mean. It was poems, and they were all really sad and beautifully written. I almost cried reading them. Suddenly, I understood why he was so mean to people. It sounded like his dad was really mean to him at home and made him feel like he was nothing at all. There was a time when we were little in kindergarten when Mark would tear up the notes that came with school lunches from other kids' moms. I thought he was such a jerk for doing that. But one day, one kid's lunch had two notes, and one was for Mark. I guess that mom heard what he was doing and thought maybe it was because he didn't get notes. Mark never ripped up the notes again. I had totally forgotten that. But now, reading his journal, I remembered he was in foster care, which meant the people he lived with weren't even his real parents and maybe they didn't want him at all. I guess if you feel like an insect, being a bully is probably the only thing you can do to feel like you have any say in your life. I wrote him a letter and said it wasn't his fault that he felt like that. I finished the letter and put it in his notebook. When I saw him at school the next day, I felt totally different about him. I saw the sadness in him and how no one paid any attention at all to him. And I admit, I swooned a little when I realized he was actually pretty cute. I got the notebook out and walked up to him with it. Is that mine? It, um, fell out of your bag yesterday. And you didn't give it back? I got busy, sorry. I gave it to him. He opened it and saw my letter. He read it there as I stood watching, my cheeks getting redder and redder by the second. You read my journal? He kept his eyes on the page, like he couldn't face me. I understand why you're mean to people, but before I could finish, he ripped my letter from the notebook and dropped it on the floor. Don't ever read my stuff without permission again. All the good feelings I had for him disappeared. Didn't he know how hard I worked on that letter? How much I cared? Not to mention, I bore my soul to him. I got red again, but this time, it wasn't embarrassment. It was rage. That night, I told my mom everything. She told me, Honey, you tried to do something nice, and that's great. But you read his private journal without asking. You invaded his privacy. I'm the only person who saw him. Everyone else ignores him. I understand. But that doesn't make him any less worthy of having privacy, does it? I went to my room without talking to her for the rest of the night. How could she not see what I had done? I put my heart on the line and got rejected. I did the right thing. All I wanted was to help him and let him know I understood. That night, I couldn't sleep. I kept tossing and turning, thinking about how he acted.
but also what my mom said and how violated I would feel if someone read my diary. After barely sleeping a wink and finally calming down so I wasn't so angry anymore, I decided she was right. As soon as I got to school, I would apologize to him and that would be that. I practiced my speech the entire walk to school that morning. Every word I would say, every gesture, I wanted to be understood and let him know that I understood him too. But when I got to school, I was horrified to see that there were printed posters of me all over the halls. They had my school photo and said Maggie is a stalker. Everyone was looking at me. I ran to the bathroom and cried. How could he do that to me? Maybe I was wrong to think he had any good in him at all. I wanted to run away and go home. But we had a big test that day, so I had to sit in class after class while the other kids whispered about me. I sat in all my classes getting angrier and angrier, waiting for my last class when I would finally see him. I couldn't wait to confront that jerk. When I finally saw him, he smirked at me. I stomped right up to him and yelled, Tell them it was you! It was me. Tell them it's not true! It is true. You read my journal. I was so frustrated, all I could think of was to scream. Ah! The teacher came up to both of us and gave me detention for yelling in class and gave him detention for pulling the prank. When we were both in detention, I made sure I was looking out the window or at the ceiling. Anywhere, as long as we were not looking at each other. And of course, he starts whistling. I had to grind my teeth to keep from yelling again. Then the teacher left to get a coffee and we were left alone. It was so awkward. After a while, he took out his notebook and was reading something inside really intently. I had to admit I was curious about what it was. And then he wrote something and I was so mad at myself for even caring, but I did. I wanted to know what it was. As much as he annoyed me, I really did like his poems. But then I remembered his prank and ignored him. It was so mean, how could he do that? Did you really mean what you wrote in your letter? I couldn't believe he was actually talking to me. Yes, of course, but how do you remember? You threw it away. After I put all the posters up, I went back and found it in the trash. He took out a paper from his journal. It was my letter. No one's ever seen me the way you did. Then the bell rang and detention was finally over. He moved to the door, but before he could leave, I said, I'm sorry about reading your journal, but I really like your poems. He turned and looked me in the eyes and said, Can you come to my house tomorrow? I was shocked and couldn't speak for a minute. Before I realized it, I said, yes. He ripped a piece of paper from the journal and gave it to me. It had his address and a note for me. I read it when he left. It said, To the girl who saw through me, usually everyone sees past what I am or I might become. But when you looked, you saw something more. To them I am glass, cold and cracked. But to you I am water, living and essential. I have never been seen before. It scared me. Thank you. I'm sorry. Again, I swooned. The next day was a Saturday, so I went to his house and heard yelling as soon as I got close. The house was small and the yard kind of dirty. I knocked on the door and Mark came out, holding a guitar. His right eye was bruised. He moved past me, walking toward a path in the woods across the street. Are you coming? I followed him all the way down to the shore of a lake I didn't even know was there. He sat down, and I sat down beside him, wondering what he was thinking. You said you liked my poems. I did. They're not poems. They're songs. Oh, can I hear one? I've never played for anyone before. You don't put yourself out there. That's why people don't pay attention. He hesitated, then played the guitar and sang one of the songs. He sang about his fears, his sadness, and about feeling like a monster for having to put people down to make himself feel big. When he was done, he wiped a tear and said he would have to go back or his foster dad would be angry. He left me there by the lake as I watched the sunset over the water. I knew I was falling in love with him. When I got home, my mom told me the one thing that would ruin everything just as it was all getting so good. We were moving across the country. She told me she was sorry, but we had no choice. When I saw him across the lawn at school, he smiled at me. I practically melted, but my smile faded quickly. He knew something was wrong. He came up and walked with me. Are you okay? I have to move. His eyes immediately lost their light. I could tell he was devastated. What are you thinking? <sighs> it's selfish. It's okay. Tell me. You're the only one who sees me. Maybe that's true right now, but it doesn't have to be. Your songs are beautiful. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't relate to anyone. Of course you do. 
We all have pain. We all get bullied. Even you. He thought about what I said, then a smile crept on his face and he looked right at me. My heart stopped when I saw his eyes. They were bright and full of hope. I never thought about that. Thank you. I can't believe you're moving away. I know. We both looked down, sad for ourselves because of how little time we had together. And then I raised my head and said, You know what? We're here now, right? So why are we sad? We can be sad when I leave, but today, I want to be happy. You can just decide to be happy? Yep. Why not? You're here. I'm here. We have all day to talk and hang out. He thought about what I said, then smiled. He looked at me and asked, What do you want to do? Without thinking, I leaned over and kissed him. His cheeks turned bright red. We both laughed. He took me to a boba tea place, then we ate some ramen and even went to karaoke. I had never had so much fun. I was worried it would only last for today, but I put all the worry behind me and enjoyed the moment. That night, we had to say goodbye. It was the hardest thing I ever had to do. He walked me home and kissed me before he left. The last thing he said to me was, If I never see you again, please know you'll always be with me and all the people I help with my music. I watched him leave, holding on to the moment as long as I could. When it was time, we packed the moving truck and left. Then to my surprise, I saw him. He was on the sidewalk, talking to one of the shy kids he used to pick on. But this time, they were both smiling. He was apologizing and making friends. I knew then that everything would be okay. And as for me, I was going somewhere new. Sure, it was scary and a little sad, but it was also exciting. Who would I meet? What would I do there? I decided to enjoy every day and made a promise that I would make the most of any situation that came up in my life, good or bad.